I fell in love with Singapore. Such a beautiful country, an amazing city with diverse culture, amazing neighborhoods, delicious food, and many amazing sights to see. So come along on this travel vlog as I show you exactly why I fell in love with this amazing place. So this action-packed day actually started off in the neighborhood of Chinatown, which is an amazing neighborhood that we ate our way through, saw temples, went to a hawker center. There was so much we saw and did here that I made an entire video of Chinatown. But before we left, we wanted to check out a place that was very similar to lots of the sites in Little India, which is the Sri Ariman Temple. Originally built in 1827, the Sri Mariaman Temple is the oldest Hindu temple in all of Singapore. It's a little weird that it's in Chinatown, but it was a really cool area to check out and jam to adventure and see before we actually made our way to Little India soon after. One of the first highlights we checked out in the area of Little India was Tan Teng Mia, which is actually a colorful Chinese villa built in 1900, which is kind of like a little bit of a flip-flop. Before we saw a Hindu temple in Chinatown, now we're seeing a Chinese building in Little India, but it is so beautiful and a really interesting place that you need to check out in Little India. Next, we checked out the Little India Arcade, which is an outlet mall selling many things and it just has a really fun atmosphere with lots of cool little things to check out or purchase if you are interested in doing so. After this, we went to the Tekka Center, which is the main market center in Little India, but most importantly, here there's a hawker center. Food! So we are here at the Tikka Center, which is another hawker center here in Little India. Yes, again, we have more samosa, always have samosa. And this time I'm actually getting a bit of a different entree, which is a bit of a dosa. I'm really excited to try it because I love Indian food, so what better way to try it in Little India at a hawker center where the locals eat. Every neighborhood in Singapore seems to have a main religious building for you to stop by and check out. That's like the hub of the city. And Little India is no exception because here they have the beautiful and iconic Sri Virama Kaliyaman. That was very difficult to say, but it is an iconic Hindu temple that unfortunately was closed when we stopped by. But just the architecture and details and ornate sort of design makes this temple an iconic thing you must see in Little India. So unfortunately, the Abdul Ghafur um, mosque here in Little India is closed. It's only open for worship, which would not include me and Vanessa. But anyway, it's really cool to see a bunch of different temples and religious sites here in Little India in uh, opposition to the ones we saw in uh, Chinatown. And now we're going to keep the multicultural exploration going and walk to um, the Arab quarters and area from Little India. So we're getting some of China, getting some of India, and get some of the Middle East now all within like one day of exploring Singapore just to show you how diverse and multicultural this freaking city is with all the neighborhoods it has to offer. So we're gonna walk, it's about like a 10 minute walk from here and then try and explore some of that area in our day two here in Singapore. We have now arrived at Kampong Glam, aka the Arab Quarters here in Singapore. The first notable site we checked out was Haji Lane, which is a notable street in the Arab Quarters where there are many interesting shops selling cool little crafts and little artistic pieces at some boutique sort of shops. There's also lots of beautiful street art and murals on these beautifully decorated shops and lots of people walking around. So it's a good place to do some um, people watching and some sightseeing just to get overall acquainted with the vibrant, beautiful neighborhood that is Kampong Glam here in Singapore. If you're picking up on any themes, you know what's coming next. We visited the Sultan Mosque, which is the house of worship here in Kampong Glam. It was built back in 1824 and it is magnificent. It's so beautiful and it makes us feel like we are right in the Middle East, not anywhere in Asia, well, not Southeast Asia, that is. Due to being destroyed by the immense jet lag from traveling to America, we got some afternoon coffees here at Arabica, Singapore. I thought it was a unique place, but it turns out it's just a chain. But hey, at least it says Arab in the name, which is appropriate for the Arab quarters. The food here, the whole earth, everybody, so good. I love the perekanan cuisine, which is like a mixture between Chinese, Indonesian, Malay. I got the 
Penang Redang. Very good, lots of spices and delicious. Love it here, guys. I cannot emphasize enough how delicious the Penang Rendang was. It's probably my favorite thing I've ever eaten in Southeast Asia. Vanessa got the sweet and sour chicken, a vegan version, of course, which was good, but a little bit more typical, nothing too crazy. And also we had some nice little starters, but that is whole earth. I cannot recommend going here enough. We then explored Singapore a bit at night because we wanted to visit a place that we've previously gone to, but this time during the night for a special event. This event is occurring at the Super Tree Grove, which is an exhibit at Gardens by the Bay, that famous iconic garden where there's actually a night show where they play some music and show some extremely beautiful lights. So I'll show you a little bit of a snippet from this because there's so much I could potentially show you. But let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and So that was the super trees. We got to see the really cool enchanted gardens light show, which happens at 7.45 and 8.45. But unfortunately we came for the 8.45 one to give us time to have dinner, but we weren't able to climb up and do the OCBC uh, Skyway to get really close and personal with the super trees. But either way, we got to see them lit up at night, which is really cool. I think they'll have cooler at night than they are during the day personally. And a light show with music, which is a very unique experience as well. So make sure you come here before 8.30 if you want to get up there and walk right next to those behemoths. But also, the light shows are definitely where it's at at nighttime here at Gardens by the Bay. And that was the end of this day, everybody. A day that truly made us fall in love with Singapore. What an amazing city, but what an amazing country with so many beautiful sights, amazing cultures, delicious foods, and just great things to see and explore. Thanks for watching. Peace.